Actually, there we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Whip Finish Wednesday. Katie and I are really excited to see everyone hopping on live already. And uh, if you're not live, Come on Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. We'd love to see you chatting with the whole crew. So welcome, everyone. We've got a fun night in store tonight. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to taking my son, John Christopher, fishing tomorrow up in a little mountain stream where I was on Friday or Saturday, excuse me. And while I was over there, it was... Um, Interesting because we got a lot of rain and the temperature is about 20 degrees cooler than it was the day before. So I didn't think there was going to be um, many, um, I didn't think there was going to be much dry fly activity. So I just brought my Euro rod and um, I had uh, a smaller dry rod as a backup. But I left it in the car. And um, <clears throat> when I got out there, there are tons of blue quills popping off. So I was like, gosh, I missed a good opportunity. So Tomorrow, John Christopher is going to be throwing some dries, and uh, I even pulled up a, a few, whipped up a few little um, little soft tackles as well to play with. So now that we are successfully connected, hello to Mark. I believe you are in East Tennessee now. Steve, Ken in Australia. There's about three Australians here last week. Barry, Paul, Doctor Stevenson. How's it going? And Joseph, how are you and Bear doing? It's fun seeing everyone chatting. Yes, it is. So we'll go live on the old Instagram. So let's show real quick what we're going to be tying tonight. Um, I've got a few different, uh, tied this on a few different looks, looks, tied on a few different hooks, Katie. We put it on the, the vice, please. Um, here is one size 18 blue quill tied on the Tiemco 100 SPBL. And here is one, let's see what this one's tied on. This is tied on the A-Rex 500 or 501, excuse me, freshwater 501. Tail's a touch long on that one, it looks like. Um, and what's interesting is all four of the ones that I've got right here are all tied on the same feather off of a cape. And I'll show you that cape in just a second. Um, this one's tied on a, another uh, A-Rex Freshwater 501, 501. And this last one is probably what I'm going to be enjoying fishing the most, and that is the A-Rex uh, Freshwater 503. This is their dry fly light. Um, and the shank's a little bit shorter on this one. You can see the hook gap's a touch bigger. It is a lighter weight wire, so it should float a little bit better, but I like that one. Um, what's up, Jared? Blazing the outdoors, hopping on live, and our good friend Michael in Florida. Al, Mr. Canton. David Smith, Mike, and Steve again. Truman! Truman's in the house. Yeah, I like this one as well. So we'll start with this one. Um, this, this model does come in the 502 and 503, so barbed or barbless, but it does have a nice little hook gap on it. But while I'm putting this hook in the vise, let's chat with Katie for a second and see some nice pictures of March Browns that you all submitted last week. Yes, I would love to share some of those with you guys. <laughs> a whole lot. So let's get started. This is. Billy Bugs, March Brown. Oh, Bill Brasiers. And we also have a screenshot from Bull X72's Weekly Reel, March Brown. And David Smith. Wait, is that David Smith? Uh, that is the Finn Fire Fox Flies and Lures that's or something like that. That's the same person. Same, same person? Okay. Yeah, I think he so. That's the one that was just submitted just a few minutes ago. Is that the same? Or if you're watching, is that the same? David Smith and Fox Fireflies. Um, also, John Collins. That's a pretty one. It sure is. And the fly is nice, too. David Smith said, yep, that's me. He runs Fox Fireflies and Lures. Sorry, David, if I got your the, got the lure thing wrong. 
It, it's Fox Fire Flies and Lotion. Um, this is Jared Blazer. He's an East Tennessee Ian. I know. Maybe he'll be going to the Carter family fold. Ooh. Um, JG Cannon. Really cool <laughs> picture. <laughs> like, I didn't even realize it was like that until like I was putting it on the computer. I was like, oh my gosh, it's on the safety pin. Share. First brookie. And he's first rookie on the fly. And this oh, is, I don't know what pattern it was, but he said that all the patterns, he posted a bunch of fish that he caught and he caught them all on patterns. He learned to fly, to tie right yes, here. Yes, go Jimmy. Joshua. Riston. Stunning golden colors. Ken Brooks. Thank you, Ken. Love them. Leave them. Don't do anything to them except use them. Magpie fly tying. That's right, right? Magpie. Yep. Okay. Steven. And Thursday's hopper. Not Thursday shopper. No. Nope. Thursday's hopper. That's right. Greg Lenny, another Australian. Another Australian. Another Australian. We've been studying Australia. And World War II. Ooh, Jimmy lately. said that the, the fish that you posted or you shared just a minute ago. Warrior. This one fell to a size 18 warrior, y'all. Right there. You got it. And then we also have Steve Yates, a.k.a. Joe Brandon. Joe Brandon. <laughs> And then we had Foxfire Flies and Lures again because I thought that was a different thing, but clearly it's not. So David is the same one. Awesome. Yes. So a lot of a good Appalachia fly. And if you like Appalachia music, you should come to the Carter Family Fold Saturday night. That's right. White Top Mountain Band will be playing. Mm -hmm. And that's my spiel. If you like bluegrass. We'll put it on you for a sec. Oh, yeah, sure. There we go. Well, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I said, if you like bluegrass music, you should check out the Carter Family Fold. I believe it's in Hilton's. Saturday night. Hilton's, Virginia. It's Yes, it's good family fun. Johnny Cash and June Cash. That's where June Bug is from. That's right. So check it out, y'all. Anyway, all right. So, um, thanks to all the all of you that were that were chatting and complimenting all the flies, and we did get a whole bunch of March Browns, so that is awesome, really cool. And and big thanks to Jimmy for sending a picture, uh, or seeing pictures of the flies of the fish that he caught with the flies. And not that I'm saying that Rainbow Warriors are good or bad or anything, but we switch over to the vice real quick. I will. Um. There, there's some right there ready to go for the morning. So I'm a big rainbow warrior fan. So the hook we have in the vice is the A-Rex freshwater five zero three. That is that one that was the, the last fly I believe I shared was posted or was, was um, tied on. So it does have a slightly larger hook gap. Hey Ken, thanks for watching. Thanks for jumping in. We will get in touch later. And as always, you tied a great fly. Yes, you did, Ken. Or, or you should say, he tied great flies. He tried tied great flies, mate. Yes. Langley's been to the Carter family fold. Really? Mm-hmm. Yay. We're so, so excited. Hey, we're coming back with a bunch of cute girls Saturday night. So just saying. Langley might want to come over and hang. Mm -hmm. There'll be two, four, five. Six, One, seven, two, three, you. four. Oh, four of, of Langley's age will definitely for sure be there. Right. Rainbow so, Warriors do rock for sure. They're one of my faves. So here's something that as I was tying these, um, I thought, hey, why did, I, why did it take me this long to figure this out? Here's a cool little cheat, cool trick, cool whatever you want to call it. So it is a size 18, so I'm using Saberfly 18 on classic wax thread. I like the little bit thinner thread for this. But here's the, the cheat. So 
I like for um, on parachutes for roughly the uh, abdomen to be two thirds. Let's find a good pointer here. The abdomen, which is the back, to be roughly two thirds of the the fly's body, and the thorax, which is the thicker part in the front, to be roughly a third. And personally, I like my um, parachute posts to come out of the center of the thorax. Kind of makes sense. So I always like throw my thread on there and then kind of guess where I think the center, center of our thorax is going to be. But here's a little thing that I did on the past four flies that kind of helped out a little bit. Greg Lenny. Is Greg. Oh, Greg. Awesome. Oh, Greg can actually comment on YouTube. He can comment. First, yes. We're glad you can comment, mate. God, that's awesome. Jimmy, and I, we've all come a long way. I couldn't tell Rainbow Warrior until I started watching YouTube either. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Rainbow Warriors were around. I don't know what, even when they came out. Anyway, so here, so this trick here, if you'll put your thread base down, start at the front and work it back until your thread is a third of the entire hook shank. So roughly the thread, in my, the way I'm looking at it, is about the maybe there is about a third of the hook shank. And if you want the, the thorax to be 25%, that's fine, or whatever, 40%, that's fine. Whatever you want, have the thread cover the hook shank that much. Then take your thread and bring it to the middle. So it's going to be about, I'm trying to get it right to the, what I think is the middle. Right there is the middle of that little bit. So now I'm ready to take my, this is Semperfly Poly Yarn. Go to the center. Wrap six wraps forward, or you can do that. So we got our poly yarn here. I'm going to make sure it's all straight. Do it right like this. Misha is opening the door herself, isn't she? She just she made just her, she gonna help herself. She just made herself at home. All right, so take it. See the my post right here, and drop it straight down right in the middle of that little little bunch. We can look at it, see, see, it didn't go quite, there we go, that's better. Now we're gonna do our two, two more wraps here, so that's three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then around. If y'all have any questions about this posting method, let me know, but whenever, it's a little while ago, so I don't wanna spend too much time on it. Um, Where's the card? The Carter family fold is in, I believe it's in Hilton's, Virginia. Yeah, I meant to copy the link address, but I'm messed up. So let's try that again. There you go. <laughs> now you have a map. <laughs> it's like 25 minutes from Bristol. Well, that's just right up the road from Kingsport, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just past Gate City, and then you're there. All right, so we've got our um, nice smooth parachute posts done. Questions? Anything on that? I did that one really quick, guys. That one's not. That was really fast. Not that. It's not like the magic, because like I said, we did these earlier. Um, the biggest thing is just the smaller hook and the colors. So we're going to use a few different tailing materials tonight. I think the one I posted, I I did a a nice little dark pardo CDL, and then I realized I had some done cdl so I, that's what we'll use on this one and i'm going to pull off oh let's see steve will tell us not seven not six but how many is that two four six seven that's seven seven so pop that off see how my my butts the curlies are lined up misha chillax misha what are you doing where is she she's right here she right behind me I've got enough Misha. I've got enough dead birds behind me. Misha, get out of there. She's liking the wood duck that's on the ground. Quit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna take my my fibers here. What is the key to stop the post okay. spinning on the hook? Plus I broke one. Um on the next one, I'll I'll show it in a little more detail, Greg. Um because the biggest trick is keeping your thread tight until you're done. 
So I want this to be about the length of the body, not the whole hook length of the body. So I'm going to do a pinch wrap. And this is where, if you notice, the one that I posted today was a little messed up because my tail had uh, um, slid over to one of the sides. It didn't look quite as good. I'm going to take this just to see, see what it'll look like. I'm going to go under everything, and I'll pull it. So you can see how it kind of spread it out a little bit. It's good enough. So, Greg, the key is to... Keep your thread tight. Do your three wraps, three wraps, three wraps, and then three wraps, but don't ever let go of your thread, and um, that will keep your post tight-ish. So I'm going to put a little bit of a taper right here. Not a whole lot. About that much. This 18 knot thread does not build much um, of anything. Trying to get my post. It's kind of frizzing on me. All right. So let's switch over to the side here. Come here, Sean. Come here. Like helps a little with time. Yeah. It'll help it stick on there. Yeah. Good girl. So I've got light gray. These are the Magpie Biots here. You can see. Yep. Right there. This is light gray. I don't think, I don't know if they have light gray anymore, but. <laughs> That's the color I want to use. So I have it. So I'm going to longer scissors usually helps out old Misha. She's getting some loving over there. So what I'll do is I'll hold this by the tip. See, I'm just holding my tip. And what, what I want to do, let's switch over to the hook one more time. So do you see how wide this is here? So if I wrap this up like this. This is really as close as my last rack can, is going to be. And you see that that kind of goes down halfway down the, um, the hook shank. So what I'm going to do is this little kind of webbing part here, this bottom part, I'm going to trim that off. So I'm going to make this about half as wide. And I'm going to go like this with the long scissors. One nice little cut. And as you can see, it's about half as wide. Same thing. I'm going to lightly moisten the biot and put the cut side up. Now with, oh, somewhat touching rash. Doesn't have to be perfect. Bring this up. Now, if you're going to sell the flies, or if, let, me, let me say five. If I was going to sell the fly or give it to someone that was going to use it to fish a bunch and Really want to make it as durable as possible. This is where I would put a, a drop of super glue on there, but I'm not, and it's barbless. So, like I like I said before, usually when you're pulling the, unless you're catching a big old fish, I I tear up my flies with forceps when I'm pulling the the hook out of the fish's mouth. And since it's barbless, I don't ever use forceps to pull them out of the mouth, so I don't have the issue of them getting torn up too often. Now, if super glue would help me not get stuck on rocks, then I'd be golden. I'd use it all the time. Let's see here. And I'm just going to wrap this up. Just like so. Did you get stuck in this side, Misha, and you can't get out? Slowly overlapping wraps. Just like this. Slowly overlapping. I think that's a thing. What was the tip? I saw someone say great tip. Sometimes I don't know what I say. Believe it or not, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. Um, I wish I could say I had a script or something. But um, like I think it was actually Stephen yes, today on, on, on his comment. He said that he learned about, or not learned, but it was nice to, to see like when you're doing the... Um, Let's get rid of that. When you're doing wood duck, to pick a place. I do it with CDL. Oh, shoot, I can't find it now. Anything that has a pattern on it, pick a spot on the feather when you're measuring it and just kind of keep that spot there. Can't do it on this because there's no big spots. Anyway, this is already kind of got off topic. Cutting the bio. Oh, yes. It's nice. 
guys. Okay, so this one looks like it, it fits perfectly. See how it goes to the back of the biot? Here's the one that I used earlier. That said, I use the same feather on all those different flies. And on this one, it's just a touch, just a touch big, which would be fine. But um, I plucked a brand new one off. Let's check out this feather. Look how speckly and stuff that is. This is a... That was his birthday present to himself. This is another birthday present to me from me. Let me switch over to... Look at that. Let me switch over to the side. This is just a medium gray done. Right here. To John. Big, from John. Happy fancy birthday. fancy bronze. Because I'm a bronze medal finish baby. But when I'm with you, I feel like I'm the gold medal finisher. Yes. Okay, so that oh, that's that's what I'm using. Terrible. And it's kind of cool that I, I got those four, and I could probably get two more flies out of out of one cape feather. Be pretty easy with a saddle feather, but cape feather, yeah. There he is, Mr. Hankins. So <clears> yeah, <throat> so I, I wasn't sure if he was but that that's the one. See all that speckling and stuff. I just think that's only us. Dorks could really appreciate it. And you know what? I got all excited about that. Y'all are going to really laugh now. No, oh, I thought I lost a feather that I picked off. Okay, so here's the here's the tip of it or the very base. I'm going to look at it just like I've done before. I'm going to look at the stem. Just switch to one or the other, whichever camera angle you want to use. So that's where I pulled it off. And I'm going to look at that stem to where it starts getting thin, which really is roughly here. I mean, there's kind of like a little bit of webbiness there. Obviously, you don't want to use that. But you can see that it goes away pretty quick. So I'm going to cut it off probably about there. And I'm just going to pull down. And get it just right. And this one is a roughly a size... I remember what it was. It was a right square size 18. So cross it over, hook it in, pull it up, make sure that's the so notice the ones that have been watching for a while is I don't put quite as much hackle as I used to a few years ago. My posts aren't quite as big. And um when uh when I was talking with Kelly Gallup when we met him in uh Montana. He was like, man, you do some beautiful stuff. You use that, you, you use a lot of hackle. That's what he said. And I'm like, well, I guess I do. Thank you. But I maybe I ought to reevaluate. And I did. So I don't use quite as quite as much hackle as I used to do. Because hackle doesn't float. It's not like it's a foam. It just helps it spread out the weight of the fly using on the surface tension of the water. I think I've said that kind of backwards, but um, more hackle doesn't necessarily mean it's going to float more, especially on a parachute. Oh, speaking of floating more, if things get tough, flat tires, plane, chicken feathers, displacement. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know what is a mammal that likes to get wet but doesn't stay wet, honey? I don't know. A beaver. But they get a almost had dark on it. Yeah. Beaver. So we're going to use fine is that beaver. A joke or oh, it's a trivia. Look, look at the TV. Okay. They we're using beaver because they, they do their they shed water or something. Okay. It's a good dry fly dubbing. I remember doing our um, puff daddies with beaver a long time or a while ago. So I like put a couple wraps in front, bring my thread to the back couple wraps there. Now we just start kind of crossing it around until we've got a nice little, pull that off of there. Nice little, um, there we go. See how we're looking. We've got it tapered up. Now the thorax, if you can see that pretty good, the thorax is not a whole lot bigger than the, the abdomen, but it is bigger. So it should be roughly about a third bigger. So one of the ones we posted, it wasn't quite big enough, but you do want it to taper towards the eye. If it gets smaller, no bueno. 
So you see, I did one uh, one wrap around the post. Now this is a smaller hook, so you should be able to see it. I should be able to do it right. So we'll get it just like that. And this is just how I, I like to do it. You don't have to do it this way. But I like to do it because it's easier for me to finish the fly. And it's easier for, uh, for me to wrap it because I'm just taking the, my hackle feather and I'm wrapping straight up and straight down. So straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Let's get that twist out of there. There we go. Do one more. Just like that. So you can see we've got our um, our post wrapped. Take our thread, go down, down, up over the hook, down, up over the eye. So we've done two wraps. Bring it right here. We'll cut off the uh, hackle. Just like that. I'll pull tight. And just because I don't want this little band right there, see that band right there to show? Well, you can't see with that. My band right under my parachute. That's a little bit there. I'm just going to kind of darken up my thread with a marker when I, before I wet finish. I asked that talking thing on my desk. I love it when I don't know what you are talking about. Oh, and Steve, your 10 and 2 comment set in with me like last week. And I was like, what the heck was he talking about? And now I realize this the the wing. You were saying that's where your your um wood duck wing when you're doing the dry fly should be is 10 and 2. And yeah, that's that works. I will kind of spun a little bit, but I think that turned out good. Good enough for government work anyway. Cut that off. Flan that out a little bit. And there we go. Got one little tail fiber. It's not one to cooperate. Super pretty, but that will fish just fine. Tails might be a touch on the long side. But my hackle is perfect lengthwise. Everything is good. Just me. Or did the video freeze after an ad? You know, you're still, I can still see okay, Stephen. Yes, Dave banged that one out. So we'll do um, at least one more. Here is the one that I kind of played with to the, just now as I was getting ready to go live before I started looking for my phone. Let's do a little zoom in for Instagram. Sorry, guys, seeing at the end of my tying lately. I can't see who that was, but... If you're watching on Instagram, come over and check us out on YouTube. We've got a lot of people on here chatting and talking and everything. I'd love to see you hop on. So this is one that I'm going to throw. This is a size 18. Tyler is the one that kind of inspired me on this one. This is a size 18. A um, little soft tackle that I figure I can throw behind this little parachute because it's not weighted. It'll kind of stay in the film, maybe a little bit below it. And it's got a nice little wing to it, nice soft tackle. It's got a lot of UV that you can't see on the camera right now, but it is pretty fun. And you can see the body has got this little sparkly stuff. So this has got a gamble quail is the, um, I think that's right. Yep, a gamble quail that Craig Matthews shot. Okay, let's do one more, and you all ask questions. Poor Faber. There's a teeny bit of done eye stuff. That's what gave it the UV properties. Um, and a wing material that will go unnamed. Because <laughs> it's a secret. Okay, so... <clears throat> same hook, the Arex Freshwater 503, that same thing where we put the thread down where I want my thorax to be. So roughly there. Call it like that. So is Greg still on? Because I know we had talked. What's up, Stonefly Outdoors? Yo, yo, can you come check us out on YouTube? Please, Stonefly Outdoors. 
over at Maggie Valley Fly Shop. Love to see you on YouTube because you'll be able to see. I'm just happy to look down on Instagram, and I rarely look down on that anymore. I would love to you to come over and check it out. We only have one camera on the Insta Twitter, but we've got a five, four in here. About a few. Yeah, I know, Steve. I know. It's a conspiracy. Okay, so if uh, I was hoping Greg would see on here. So this is how we're going to do a parachute post. Take it, take your parachute material, and you want this to be this is just uh silver fly poly yarn. Uh, you want this to be half as thick as you want your post to be because we're going to double it up. Okay. Take it and go. So we'll flip it around. Have it on your finger like this and have it like that. So we're just pinching it, sandwiching it in between thread and our finger. And uh, all right, Greg, so here, here's how we're going to do a parachute post. So then we take it down and bring it straight down. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is I can position it. Do I want it here? Do I want it back here? I can put it right where I want it. But from this point forward, I want to keep my thread tight. Now, this is 18 knot regular old classic wax thread. So this is not like super stout thread. But I've got two, I've got one wrap there. Now I'm going to go two more. And it's going to be a total of three. Here recently I've been putting four, but you want three or four, right? And smack dab in the middle. See how my, my hook is still flexing? It's still tight. Pull this back and I put three right here. One, two, three. Still tight, okay? Now I'll pull the back up and go one, two, three. And it's okay. If you start catching fibers, they go down. I mean, those really aren't, but it's fine. See, see that? It's still tight. Now I'm not, if I want to, I can bend the hook, but I'm not, it's just keeping my thread tight. Now I'll take my fingers, my pointer, my thumb, pull it up, and still tight. I go around it. Just, I'm not trying to go up it yet. I'm just, Putting three wraps right there around the base. If you want to put one to grow one, just to be the fun of it, that's fine. Now I can let go. Now that base right there, see how the, you can see the base? I'm not saying that you couldn't spin it around, but that, that base is good. Base isn't going. That, the foundation has been made. And this is where you can pull it up. And with even pressure, you want to... And the, the thinner the thread, the harder this is because... It just doesn't make much room. But with even pressure, you go up the, the post. And you want the post itself, what I'm building right now, to be as smooth as possible. And you can see, let's pull on it. So see how I'm, I'm moving the, I'm pulling it enough to move, to flex the hook. So that's good. So that should be uh, one, one too many wraps. So now we'll bring it down. Same touching wraps. And you're just kind of looking, watching your work to fill in any gaps or anything. And now we put one more wrap around the hook shank to save our, our little work. So as you can see, looking at it from underneath, kind of hard to tell, but it's not built on one side of the hook or the other. It's right in the middle of the hook shank. I mean, it's kind of hanging off the sides because it is, wider the thicker than the hook shank um you can pull it back you can pull it forward but that's just the post itself flexing a little bit the um as far as it's spinning around the hook shank see how i'm bending the hook we're flexing the hook that's that's really as good as i can expect i, mean, I guess i could pull it and bend the hook but i don't really want to do that Yes, Steve, I had a white one on earlier, and that um, I was, uh, I, I thought of you, and was like, man, I should probably change. So I'm glad that you like that better. But anyway, you see how smooth the post is? That's important. Um, keeping that thread tension tight most of the way, or at least until you've done, the, done with the foundation, that's important. I just trimmed it off. So the only waste that I'm going to have on this is this one little piece here, which is that long, like this to here. That's all the waste. And then whatever right here that I trim off when I'm finished with the fly, which is, you know, probably half that or so. So there's really not a whole lot of waste. 
Chris, did you win? Yeah. Um, makes it big. All right. So let's, uh, I, I want to use this for the tail. Is John Collins on? I'll say a big thanks to him. I made the, um, uh, a comment that dark done, which is what the March Brown should have been tied with. I didn't have any. And he looked in his little stash and found some dark done, dark done, not a whole lot, but a few dark done fibers. So that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to pull off. Oh, that many. Same thing. Hold it by the the tips, grab the feather itself, pulled away. There you go. See how the bunch are lined up. Same, same process. These got a little more of a cant to it, so we'll try to get them to cant upwards. I bet you we'll get it just right. They'll all cant upwards except for one. So let's bring our thread back to about there. Pinch wrap. Fair length a little better did last time. So pull that. There we go. I like that length better. Yeah, see, canting down. So let's go take our, we're going to pinch the hackle fibers, pinch the tail, pull it up, take our thread, bring it down underneath all of it. It's going to kind of mess it up. And when I do that, it's going to make it right. See, uh, spread them out. That's what does. The thing, the word that Steve said a minute ago, displacement. It helps with the displacement. Rocky with Southern Exposure this time of year. Oh my God, tons of all colors of spade, heckle. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, I don't know if I probably shouldn't have said that. Sorry, John. But thank you. All right, so we got that one, that one done. That man, that, that, fanned out a lot nicer than that CDL. You can see I'm trying to, I'm not trying to pinch it together, but I'm trying to kind of mess it up and it's still kind of looking good. All right. So we're going to do the exact same thing I did before. And if you, if you notice me pinching the post, that's because I'm trying to keep it gathered together. I'm twisting it and kind of keeping it out of the way. So when I'm wrapping, I'm not catching my post and having to do anything. So, Katie, yes. when people are tying these, how do they send them to you so we can share them on our little show? Well, they can either tag at Demuth Fly Fishing on Instagram, and but be sure that they tag it on the photo. Right. Okay. Or they can email it to us at demuthflyfishing at gmail.com. Cool. So, either way, those are... Both ways that we can get your pictures. I'm going to try to do this where you can see it. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I've got my one buyout here, and I'm going to – sometimes I'll cut this off here because it makes it easier with those, with those curlies there. Um, let me see your split. So another thing I wanted to say is – I'm going to say everyone's name because I will forget one. Um but everyone who is subscribed as a member and are either a promoter or a supporter, big, huge thank you. Because that, that means a lot to both Katie and I. It's either $4 or $8 or $3 or $9, something like that, a month. And um, we haven't done a, if you notice, we haven't done a giveaway in a while. It's because the last one, the shipping was 26 bucks for the shipping because it went to Canada which is cool. Um, but those little membership things helps pay for the shipping and we really appreciate it. And if nothing else, it makes us realize that you guys enjoy the show. So if you see a little join tab and it doesn't work or you don't see the join tab and you've got an Apple product, you might want to download or look at YouTube on the desktop, not the mo not the mobile app. And that will uh, should show the join button. But we appreciate everyone that is that has joined to this point. We'll bring this around like that so I can get that one last one in there. See how pretty that is. 
Put that bottom crate all the way. If you notice, that that's another cool little trick there. I'll show that in just a sec. And if you notice, anyone has commented has a green little green check mark by their name, like Steve there or Al, Marcus, Joe. That means that they're subscribers. So thanks. Okay, so this is a cool little um little trick. We've got a very nice taper. That one's looking good. Tail. I don't like it going up quite that much, but hey, we'll just push it down. So I do this a lot, and I just kind of assume that you all kind of understand what I'm doing. Um. Most of the time when you see people use bobbin cradles, they'll throw a half hitch in, or I prefer just throwing two whip finishes in. Sometimes when I just do one, it doesn't quite work, but I'll just go one, two, two turn whip finish, and I'm in. So, okay, we switch it over to the side view. Sure. So I'll just do two whip finish, two turn whip finish. But when I'm when I've got a jig hook or a parachute post coming up like this, I can just move my bob bobbin cradle around and set it in there because that parachute post is going to make it to where it's not going to come undone. It's not going to do anything bad. It's not going to do anything at all. It's not coming loose. It is totally fine. I don't have to put a half hitch in. I don't want to do anything. I can just sit here, speedily turn my fly, wrap the material on and then bring my, move it out of the way and I'm ready to go. So really simple, simple and easy. Which means I'm bona fide. He bona fide. He's a suitor. Remember that, honey? I do. He's a suitor. Dapper Dan. <laughs> Make sure you have that. Yeah, and when it, when all else fails, if you're trying to do it, you can't figure something out, ask someone like that has done it because I can tell you how I think it works. I know Al had a problem with it, but when I Joe had a problem with it, he's the one that told me Joe uh, Jackson that um, he had to download the app. The sorry, the desktop version because Apple doesn't play well with Google. There you go. All right, so here's my feather. See it right here. I got my thread on the tail side of the post. See where it is. Hold it at 45 with the shiny side facing me, just like this. I'm not worried about the length right now. Well, I want it to be more this way. Do one wrap. I'm going to pull it up and get the length the way I want it, which is right about there. Now I'll bring it around. And with somewhat, somewhat touching wraps. I say it doesn't have to be touching. It doesn't. But... It needs to, you need to be watching for bumps or valleys so you can fill them in or leave them open on the way back down. Yes. So you see, we got that one little, see that little butt sticking down? That's going to be my anchor. Just like that. That feather is not going anywhere. Cool. Nast. In the desktop and not my phone app. And you can do, you can look at the desktop version from your phone. Look at us talking like we're IT guys, honey. So I showed you the beaver. That worked really well. Let's do, um, we'll do, oh, shucks. I don't think I, think I put the other one. Let's do Adams in the KPOC. So same thing I've done before. Just pinch. Stick it there. It's the same way I did the beaver. This is just not quite, not as fluffy. Still very floaty, though. Any questions for the Apple designer? Don't windows. They go perfectly perpendicular to the post like yours. Mine always looks to perfectly perpendicular to the post. Um, Straight, that, okay. I've got a couple little little tricks. One is is making sure that you've built a nice smooth post itself. So this part where the fingernail is, that part's smooth. Smoother the better. And we'll slide that up. 
Hopefully I've got enough, not way too much. So let me let me go over this because this is something that I've kind of modified over the time. So doing our thorax, I'm going to use my bare thread until I start with a couple solid wraps right behind the eye. See, I've got a couple solid wraps. And I'll take this and bring it all the way back, sharp steep angle, a couple solid wraps. So I've just kind of put bookends on my thorax. Okay. Got a big open spot there, so I bring it all the way back. Kind of closing off the book in all the way back here, closing off the book in. Now I just kind of look and see where I need a little bit more dubbing. Right there. Oh, call that good. Okay, so we've got our got that done, maybe a touch much. So I won't take that off because I want it to be right. We're somewhat right. How's that looking for you guys? It's looking okay. It's easier for me to do it by me twisting it and looking at it and not trying to look at the TV. Okay, so I've got it down. I want to do one wrap around that post. So that looks a little bit better. Look good. Okay, so see if you turn your head the opposite way and we'll, yeah, that's right. You got, your tongue's not being held the right way. You got to stick your tongue out the left side, your mouth not the right. Mm. Or dark brown with a dark dun wing. These were um, the ones I saw in Virginia. Anyway, they're pretty much all, all, um, we'll say light done but maybe a, like the wings were this color then when when you're looking at this the 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 post right now and even the the photograph it's pretty gray but the photograph that that looks white but that is that's uh gray that's pretty done dunny um so one of the things that I do is I'll pull this like this and the main reason is that way it's easier for me to, because I want to wrap pretty much perfectly straight up and straight down. If my, if my wraps are kind of going this, like kind of this way, kind of this way, kind of, then it, the hackle's not going to come out the right way. I want them pretty much straight up and down. That first wrap, when I, when I pull this and I bring it around towards you, and I bring it back up, I want to make sure that that next wrap, I'm, I'm going to kind of exaggerate to get it underneath the um, the stem, and then we'll kind of slide it up so they butt up right against each other. So um, tell me if this makes sense. Oh, look up. Look at the speckling on it. It's pretty. And this is shiny side down. So I've got my one wrap here. And see that right here's the stem I was talking about. There's no feather, nothing coming off of the rachis here. I'm going to kind of go a little more exaggerated there. See how it's kind of more under? And now I just kind of bring it right up. Because if I bring it and it goes on this side of it and I start wrapping. Sorry, you can't see it. When you start wrapping, you're kind of, you got to start over. It needs to go underneath kind of exaggerated and then it'll slide up right there and you'll see me mess up live. It's kind of on the wrong side. So now I'm just bringing it straight up and straight down, getting that first wrap, just like wrapping wire, wrapping lots of things in that first wrap and looking at how my, how my hackle is as well. See how my, see how they're, oriented so they're kind of facing up this one's kind of turning a little bit but they're facing up if you notice it starts spinning or anything before it gets too much or you might have to back some up you just grab it and give it a twist and i'll bring it back down and now what i want to do and i'm having a kind of a hard time seeing the post because it's already kind of disappeared but let's see if i can make it show when I put this wrap in here, no, it didn't. so if you put a wrap in and all of a sudden the fibers all start going up into the previous wraps, you've put too much. So you want your last wrap to still the fibers to go out this way. I don't see any comments. Is that making sense, Stephen? 
the all the stuff, Steve, sorry, all the the what I was saying, I get the, the hack will come out the right way. So <clears throat> I'm gonna bring this up. Now I've got my, my hackles done, bring it down. Now I take my uh, thread and we'll go over this hook eye and bring it down. So the only thing that's going to be underneath is the hackle stem itself. Bring it around here, bring it over the hook, down. Because what I'm doing with my thread right now is if there's any little buggered up hackle fibers down here that are pointed down, I'm going to go underneath them. That's going to push them back up. So I go over the hook eye, down. If you want to put three, you can, but two usually is just be uh, adventurous like me and do two. Um, I'm, I haven't pulled tight yet on my thread. I'm going to take my scissors and get in close. Cut that out. And if there's anything, like see those couple right there, it's kind of taking me off. Cut those out. But don't worry about getting them too much, like getting every single fiber out. Now I'm going to grab it and pull tight. Because that, where I didn't pull it tight, I literally just put a couple wraps, was holding that hackle in place when I cut it, and then now pull tight. That'll kind of cinch all that down in there, pull it down into the hackle. hackle uh... Yeah, if it starts twisting, maybe undo a wrap and then kind of counter twist, like tw turn, turn it going the, the other way. Um, the opposite way that it's twisting, go ahead and give it like a couple because it's going to be impossible once it starts turning backwards for you to fix it. You got to undo it for sure. Um, so, another, another little trick is you're looking at, well, let's look at it from the front, look at it from the front right here. So, if you notice you've got more hackle or it looks like you got more hackle on one side than the other, and this looks pretty good, right? Like that looks pretty even. But if you notice that there's more on one or the other, if you'll do this, Try to bend it to one side or bend it to the other side. Or here in a minute, I'll show you from the, on the front. Let's go ahead and throw our whip finish in. Take our... I'm not trying to put a whole lot on there. Just give that thread a little bit of color. So I'm going to go down over this hook eye, down over the hook. One, down over two, three, four. So we'll do a couple things with this one because this will be it. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's back up. Okay, if you notice, this is usually where I'll, where I'll see it. Sometimes there'll be more hackle in the front or back. Like here looks like the, it might be a little bit more in the back. Well, it looks like my post is actually going, leaning forward a little bit. So if I'll pull this back like that, it'll put, it'll open the hackle up on the side, on this side. If I pull it back forward this way, it'll open the hackle up on this side. So that kind of evens the hackle out because remember, you want your post going straight up and down like my bodkin or like, my uh, Sharpie here. If it's bent one way or the other, that's going to affect the way the, the hackle fibers are coming out. So if, you're ha if your post is your wrapping got pulled this way, then you see straighten it back up. So I'll cut this off here. Make sure you get most of it on there. That, that looks okay. It's good. And I'm going to I can't remember what side that I did a whip finish on, which is this one. And I'm going to stick my Sally Hansen's just right there on the. Can you see it? Can you see that going down in there? I uh, could. Can. Good. So that's just going to sink down in right on the post. It's going to sink down into that, the thread. What I don't want to do is get it. To where it's sinking down into the the dubbing of the thorax because then it kind of defeats the purpose of having a dry fly dubbing so um let's see if this will go I mean, yeah that's good as far as that'll go if you're watching on instagram we'd love for you to come over and watch it on youtube please be able to see better um 
Yeah, Steve, that's another one of those things. You talk about buying all the different animals and everything. Like, I think this, what it costs, like three bucks, four dollars. I've had the same Sally Hanses in this for what, Katie? Like a long time. Two years? Forever. Since so, it was invented. And it's been fine. Yeah, since, it's, since it was invented. So here's the one we just tied. Same stuff, just a little, just different dubbing. You saw that hackle turning. Steve, I hope that helped out and get your hackle to come out straight. That was just full flavored hackle and I can bend it one way or the other, whichever way works good. And that's a size 18. And I'm going to try to fish that this weekend. And you guys should try to tie one up this week so we can share it next week. Absolutely. So let's turn it over to, to me or you and we'll say goodbye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Wait, you're still Just not kidding. on you. It's um, still the it's still the flood. There we go. Now kidding. it was a dry run. Share your pictures um, with us by emailing us um demuth fly fishing at gmail.com or on Instagram at demuth underscore fly fishing. Tag your picture um with demuth underscore fly fishing. Yep. And we'll like, share it on the show next week. Looks like Josh has already sent his. And next week will be our last Yay. live show for a few weeks because we will be traveling for the next couple for a couple weeks after that. True. True. Truth. Truth. Yep. So, so have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday night. Thank you so much to everyone hopping on. Enjoy hanging out. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. <laughs>